I've had the Osmo for two weeks now, and feel that I can now give it a full review. The Osmo is a curious device, astounding and revolutionary in some ways, and needlessly annoying in others. I still recommend it, but with reservations. First, the video quality is top-notch, even with the basic X3 camera. Highlights and shadows are well-preserved and easy to edit in post. However, I found the still photos to be disappointingly low res, despite their 12 megapixel size, though on the plus side you can shoot in RAW to get the most out of them. Just don't expect to be able to do much cropping or enlarging. An additional note about the quality of the Osmo's sensor is that it doesn't handle low light very well, so you will likely have to confine your shooting to the daytime. The gimbal stabilization is amazing, and produced beautifully smooth video even when I ran it with it over uneven ground. But there are two problems. First, the gimbal has occasional minor glitches. Secondly, it doesn't do well when filming up close within a few feet of the subject. But fortunately, you likely won't be doing much of that anyway to do, due to the extremely wide angle of the lens. The wobbliness that is apparent at close distances is also apparent when filming long exposures and time lapses by hand, making those advertised functions disappointingly unusable without a tripod. Despite these gripes, the gimbal does a great job under most situations. The interface is well designed and intuitive with its combination of physical buttons, trigger, and joystick controlling the movement of the camera, with the various settings being via the device through which the video feed from the Osmo is streamed. The flaw is that the device holder that is included with the Osmo only fits phones. Nothing with a screen larger than 5.5 inches will fit. It would have been so easy to make the holder stretch just a little farther, or to even sell an optional holder for specifically for tablets. Instead, I am having to manufacture one for myself using Autodesk and a 3D printer. The Osmo was advertised as being able to record video blind without a phone for streaming but this does not actually appear to be possible. A major failing of the Osmo is that the internal fan that cools the camera roars like a jet engine. The noise has a huge impact on audio quality, as demonstrated by this clip. And he sang as he watched and waited till his billy boiled. You'll come waltzing Matilda with me. DJI may be planning to fix this problem with a firmware update, but for now it is very annoying. If you want a good sound from the Osmo, you're going to need an external mic. I would have liked to see the Osmo come with an attachable hot shoe for a microphone instead of as an expensive optional accessory. Another problem with the Osmo is battery life. It only gets an hour or less on a charge. If you plan to film for extended periods of time, I highly recommend purchasing at least one extra battery. Build quality is wonderful, and the device has a nice heft and balance to it. The included hard shell case that makes you look like you're carrying a tiny violin is really great. It's the best accessory I've ever seen included with a camera. The question I now ask myself is this. Would I buy the Osmo again? If I had known all I know now, would I be as quick to spend my hard-earned cash? Well, I certainly wouldn't be as hasty as I was. What with the many bugs, questionable design decisions, poor battery life, and internal auto audio quality, as well as the inability to take good close-up shots and the disappointing quality of still photos, there are certainly enough problems to scare potential buyers off. However, I think I would still buy it, flaws and all, for the stunning smoothness and high quality of the videos it produces. This is its core function and selling point, and the one area where it meets and even exceeds expectations. These are the primary reasons I bought it, and if you are considering it for the same reasons 
then I'd say you won't be disappointed.